Hey guys, today we are going to look at processing. Processing is part of that input process output phase. Okay, so we have input, process and output. Now we've learned about these, but we haven't actually looked at process. What actually takes place in processing the data or the input that we give the computer. So let's have a look and see what actually takes place inside our computer as part of the processing part of our whole cycle. So we have all of these various components that we're going to be looking at one after the other and they all work together inside of our system unit. So let's have a look. The system unit. What is the system unit? Well, at the moment, you're looking at a computer tower there on your screen, and that is not the computer. The computer is inside. Okay, so let's open it up, take a look inside. There you can see I've got uh, a motherboard, I've got a, and I can see all the various things that are connected to each other. I can see there's some RAM there. There are, um, uh, what's that, a CPU fan there, cables everywhere. So yes, that is inside our computer. So let's have a look and see what are these components that make up the processing cycle in input, process, output, and storage. Let's have a look. All of these things. Well, first, we're going to have a look at this one, which is RAM. Then we're going to have a look at the BIOS. There it is there. We're going to see what a ROM chip is, or what ROM actually is, the good old faithful CPU, and then the motherboard, which is kind of important in this process. Okay, ha, <laughs> process. Right, number one, the motherboard. So what is the motherboard? The motherboard is basically just a printed circuit board that connects all the hardware components to each other and allows for them to communicate with each other. So that means you can tell the computer to do something and the motherboard will then be able to access all the various parts of the computer and it will do what you've told it to do. It's super important. Okay, without the motherboard, there is no computer. Then we have random access memory. Now, random access memory, again, you know this, we've done this, it's temporary storage. This is where everything that is being processed is busy being stored. All the information is taking place right there and we will, all the information is taking place right there. Don't just pretend I didn't say that. All the data that's being processed is being temporarily stored inside those little microchips. There they are there. There's eight of them on this side. There'll be eight on the other side as well. So that's all temporary. So we don't switch off our computer without saving our work. Now, ROM. What is ROM? There's a teeny tiny little ROM microchip there. ROM basically means read-only memory. And it's used with computers and all sorts of electronic devices. It contains information that must not be changed. So the computer needs to be able to access a ROM chip, access the information that's on there or the instructions and execute those instructions faithfully every time. So ROM is made to not be changed. Okay. Number four, the BIOS. Now, the BIOS chip is very important. Let me explain why. BIOS stands for Basic Input Output System basic input output system now what that means is on this little microchip which is on the motherboard everything's on the motherboard it contains um, information on the most basic access levels to your whole computer system you are able to connect to your computer system on a very basic level so you can access the the startup drives you can look at the how fast the fan is spinning what the temperature is of the the cpu all that all that sort of very inf interesting information but th we're not even launching the operating system yet on the hard drives we haven't gotten there yet so the bios is what the computer accesses when you switch on that computer okay it runs what's called a post test post power on self test and in that test in the rom sorry in the bios it tells you okay is there a is there a motherboard is there a cpu is the fan spinning what's the temperature everything is it safe do we have a hard drive attached etc all the instructions to start the computer safely and properly are contained in the bios and that's why we have a bios if there was no way to tell the computer how to begin then you wouldn't be able to use your computer okay so that's what the bios is now number five the cpu the central processing unit Basically, the CPU is a super duper fast calculator and it is able to handle and process all the instructions given to it from the computer system. It basically just calculates things very, very fast. Okay. And we measure that, okay, because it has a speed. We measure that in gigahertz, gigahertz. And that's how you 
That's how we write it, gigahertz, okay? Now, gigahertz is the number of cycles per second that a, the CPU is able to perform, or well, the number of calculations per second. And I remember at one stage, the one of the fastest supercomputers in the world could calculate one trillion calculations in one second. One trillion in one second. That is fast. Okay, And that was a few years ago, so it's probably even faster now. Basically, the CPU, although we might say it's the brain of the computer, it's just a very powerful calculator. Okay, And it executes the instructions. It processes all the input that it receives from us, and it processes that, and then it tells the rest of the computer what it's supposed to do. Let's have a look at that in a real scenario. So here we have our two main things, our input on the keyboard, our output on the computer screen. So we type the words hello, H-E-L-L-O. -L Those instructions, every time you press a key on your keyboard, it sends an instruction to the CPU, go and put the letter H on the screen. Go put the letter E on the screen. Go put the letter L. Do you see what I'm saying? And it does that every single time because the CPU is processing all of that and then it's executing those instructions. All of that is taking place then in RAM. Okay, that's still part of our process function. And then that finally then translates onto the screen in our uh, Microsoft Word or Word uh, program and it then shows up on the screen. So all of that in the matter of like super milli milli milliseconds i don't know what nanoseconds i don't know and it's there okay so hopefully this gives you a better idea as to what the processing cycle is all about and all the various components involved in processing inside of a computer thank you so much